Alright, this is chapter 20 of the lake. 20. Andy wanted a full staff meeting. It turns out that's no simple task. So here we are, hours later, finally sitting outside the cabins at 10.30 at night. The children are tucked in bed and snoring. We're in a circle. I'd like to think that's because we all want to be involved, but really it has more to do with the fact that we have eyes in every direction around camp this way. Let's say hello to pes pessimistic Esme. As the meeting starts, I plan how to catch Andy after and ask about the camp's relationship with town. Andy speaks in a low voice so we can hear, but not so, but not to be overheard. What are the cops doing? Cora asks as she finishes explaining that they didn't find anyone in the woods. They're going to look into some names I've given them. Who are they? He dips his head. I can't say. Both worked as counselors before any of you started. Both left on unhappy terms. Can you tell us what those terms were? Jake asks. He and Kayla are sitting side by side holding hands. She hasn't told me that anything happened between them, but it sure looks on now. And he presses his mouth into a thin, into a thin line before he looks at Jake. I'm sorry, I can't. But rest assured that the police will speak with both of them in person. For now, we're going to make sure that groups are doubled up. CITs must never be with their counselors when doing an activity with the campers. We're counseling our hike this week because the police have good news. Unless the police have good news. So we'll have kayak races, extra swimming time, and cooking lessons instead. Should we inform parents? Mary asks. The police didn't seem to think the campers are in danger, and neither do I, but we have to take it seriously. We will inform parents if there is another sighting or any evidence that's been that he's been back. Security will be upped. No campers will be allowed to go into the cabins alone and will remain vigilant at all times. For now, we just need to carry on as we are and make their summer the best it can be. My stomach twists when, with unease. I'm glad the cops don't think the campers are in danger, Rebecca says. But are we, Tia asks. I hold my breath. I really don't think so. There's a big leap between wanting to frighten people and wanting to harm them. The two suspects never showed any signs of violence and were let go for a number of minor grievances, Andy replies. But let's face it, it's not the two former staff members who are doing this. Rebecca curls her arms around her body and nods. Everyone stays in their cabins tonight. Does anyone have any other questions? Andy asks. No one says a word. Right, let's go. Let's all get some sleep. I stand and turn to Ollie. Are you okay? He asks, brushing his knuckles along my jaw. His fingers leave a warm trail behind them. Don't faint. I'm all right. This is all a bit scary, though. You'll be fine, Esme. I'll watch you go into your cabin. Thanks. Night. He smiles. Night. I link Rebecca's arm with mine as we walk towards the girls' cabins. You okay? She looks straight ahead, nibbling her lip. Yeah, I guess. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. You doing this? Kayla whispers to me as we walk on to our cabin. I look back and locate Andy. What choice do I have? Everyone has volunteered me. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Esme? Cora asks when I stop following her. Oh, I just need to speak to Andy real quick. Then I'll be right in. She nods and follows Kayla into our cabin. Esme, is there a problem? Andy asks. I just wondered about the graffiti and the guy in the woods. Could it be someone from town? I know a lot of camps don't have the warmest and fuzziest relationship with nearby towns. He frowns. We've had a few small issues, but nothing too bad. I can't see why a local would want to do this. How small were the issues? Maybe a local thinks they're major? Yes, perhaps they might. I'll mention it to the police, Andy says. Wow, he isn't really going to tell me what these issues are. Are you going into town now, I ask? It's a small town. There's no way the police station will still be open. No, I have a contact I can call, Andy says. Good. He smiles and his thin lips disappear. Great thinking, Esme. You're smart. Er, thanks, I reply. Get some sleep, and don't worry. We'll sort this out. He turns and walks away. Don't worry? Sounds like Andy really doesn't know me at all. My nan, my mom, and I are Olympic-level warriors. I sneak into the cabin, tiptoe through the main room, and climb into my bunk. My body is heavy and aches. I sink into the mattress and sigh. Every part of me is tired. You all right? Kayla whispers in the darkness. I left our door wide open so we can see and hear the campers. I am, but I don't think Rebecca is, I say, keeping my voice quiet. We should check on her first thing. What's wrong with her? Kayla asks. I don't know, but she seems really scared. During the meeting, she looks like she wanted to hide, and she was chewing on her lip and staring when we all, when we walked back to the cabins. I know that she was bullied in school, and I've noticed 
that when someone disagrees with her, even nicely, she tends to go inside herself. You notice everything, Esme. I turn onto my side and am confronted with something that steals my breath. I stare unblinking until my eyes sting and water leaks from the corners. No. I suck in air as fear clutches my stomach in a vice-like grip. Curved into the wall by my pillow are the letters LC. They were not there before. I freeze, staring at the letters while anxiety, while anxiety curls in my stomach. Lillian Campbell. I lick my dry lips and force my breath to slow down. And for five, out for five. God, no. She has been in our room, in my bed. I want to jump out of the bunk, run away, and never look back. She was right here. Nausea rolls my stomach. Kayla is in bed. Do not freak out. I reach out, my hand trembling as it gets closer to the wall. My index finger pokes into the rough scratches and loose shavings drop to the floor. No. Retracting my hand, I bellowed into a fist. My shoulders hunch. What do I do now? Someone here besides me and Kayla knows what happened ten years ago. Maybe it's Lillian, or maybe it's someone else. Someone she told, or a witness we didn't know existed. Ten years. That's a long time to carry anger. Esme, I clear my throat, but I'm unable to look away from Lillian's initials. It takes everything I have to keep my cool. Yes, I notice things, and you only notice when cute guys are around. It's a talent. I have a cute guy radar. Night, babe, Kayla says. Her voice is barely audible over the shrill ringing in my ears. Night, I whisper as shaking fingers curls around the sea. Why am I not telling Kayla about this?